الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين my dear fellows and students and doctors who have already you know they have watched the first video for the Lyme disease that is spirochetal disease we are dealing with the spirochetal diseases this is session two it was the lecture will be prolonged if I will take as a whole. That's why I am I actually split the lectures into two uh, major diseases. It is Lyme disease is one of the major diseases which can be asked to any doctor appearing in the examination. The professor, I am Professor Ali Heather and I am honorary global professor of Edison without any name or fame or any economics because it is a free free channel <coughs> free channel to all of us to all the person <coughs> who want to gain knowledge in medicine so I was talking about the clinical features <coughs> of the Lyme disease and uh, I have already said that the actually the primary religion which can uh, be uh, what is called as a hard data for the disease of the Lyme is concerned other than the geographical area and other than the endemicity is concerned the appearance of a rash, specific rash it is known as Ritzema migrans it, it is a big rash center is I see this is the, this was this was the position previously that this was a rash. Center is here, it is a pale one and here is a rash around it there is a clear clear so clear and here again it is a circular rash again there will be clear and again there is a rash, a red, a reddish line because it will it can disappear and will reappear on the other areas of the body it migrates from one place to the other place it is called, it is, it is in a migrants and it comes actually most of the part of the medical world as a as a hard data of the disease So the early disseminated infection, but it was a primary lesion. Now coming to the early disseminated infection, within the days to the weeks after the onset of the local infection, which is erythema migrans, the Borrelia bacteria may spread through the lymphatic system or the bloodstream, and then called the Borreliaemia that is called. In 10 to 20 percent of the untreated cases, the erythema migraine rash develops at the sites across the body that bear no relation to the original tick bite. First appear at the tick bite, but it is it is migrated to the other areas. That is why the erythema migrans. The transient muscle pain, myalgia, joint pains, arthralgia are also common. And about 10 to 15 percent of untreated people, Lyme disease causes the neurological problems known as the neuroborreliosis. Early neuroborreliosis typically appear four to six weeks about one to two, 12 weeks about after the tick bite and involves some combination of the lymphocytic meningitis, cranial neuritis, radiculopathy, possibility of the mononeuritis, mononeuritis multiplex, that is neuroborreliosis. Uh, then first, again, now this is the uh, very very near to the uh, aseptic type of meningitis and its complication. The lymphocytic meningitis causes characteristic uh, changes in the cerebral spinal fluid and may become accompanied by several weeks by variable headache and less commonly usually mild meningitis signs. That is inability to flex the knife fully and intolerant to the bright lights. 
but typically no one no, no or only very low fever so the carnic sign bridges key sign will not be present only inability to flex the neck is possibly because of the meninges maker is it is not a pure sign of the meningitis it is called meningism after several months the neurobilirubinosis can also present auto laryngeal logical symptom that, that is the throat is involved and the ears are involved up to the 76.5 percent of them they, they present as tinnitus so it is one of the cause of the tinnitus neurobil the neurobilirubinosis is concerned the most common symptoms other than tinnitus is concerned is vertigo and dizziness and hearing loss as revealed by the patient himself or audiometry over the next most common symptoms in children partial loss of vision may also occur cranial neuritis is an inflammation of the cranial nerves only the nerves involved the, that is the cranial nerves when due to the lion it is uh, mostly the uh, seventh nerve palsy impairing blinking smiling chewing these are the signs of the facial palsy it may also cause the intermittent double vision diplopia because of the weakness of the one of the extraocular muscle lined with decolopathy the the inflammation of the nerve roots which are coming from the spinal cord spinal roots uh, are involved and causes pain and less often weakness numbness or oral sensations in these areas of the body served by the nerves connected to the affected roots so it will cause the pain only according to the spinal segment as concern oral sensation you know, numbness in the areas of the body served by the nerves connected to the affected tissue for example limbs or parts of the trunk the pain is often described as unlike any other previously felt it should be because it is a neuritis it is a excruciating burning migrating pain worse at the night really symmetrical and often accompanied by the extreme sleep disturbance while mononeuritis multiplies is inflammation causing similar symptoms one or more unrelated peripheral nerves for example the the, the uh, only one the nerve which are supplying to the hand for example it is the median nerve which is supplying it should go on as the, the supply of the digital nerves as a, as a part of the digital nerve the the nerve should be involved basically the median uh, nerve but all the parts of the median nerves are not involved the asymmetrical dis- involvement is there it is uh, it is the su- it is supplying the small fingers for example but the other fingers are not involved in the radial nerves they are some part of the radial nerves are involved in the same hand and that is why it is called the mononeuritis multiplex the specific nerves are involved not the nerve branches are involved the mononeuritis multiplex is very commonly seen in leprosy It is also seen in thyroid disorders. It is also seen in the liver disorders. It is also seen in diabetes mellitus. Now, rarely the early neurobilirubinosis may involve the inflammation of the brain or the spinal cord with symptoms such as confusion, abnormal gait, ocular movements, and speech impaired in movement, impaired motor planning, or shaking. So these are the you know movement disorders it is the movement disorders it co- it can cause by involvement of the brain in brain it will involve the basal ganglia the spinal cord it will, it will involve the spinal cerebellar nerves in north america the typical of the neurobilosis presentation of the five to 10 percent of untreated people in about 75% of the cases are accompanied by the lymphocytic meningitis actually 
and in the European zone, a combination of the lymphocytic meningitis plus yeah. reticulopathy, this is called the Ban Wath syndrome. Ban Wath syndrome. Remember this name. Who are appearing in the MRCP examinations? Ban Wath syndrome. What is it? It is caused by the Lyme disease. As it is a combination of the lymphocytic meningitis plus radiculopathy. And this is accompanied by facial palsy, it may be accompanied by the facial palsy, which is not the part of it. And this syndrome can radicular pain tends to start in the same body region as the initial erythema migrans rash. It mimics that region of the supply. Supply is concerned. If there was one perceived possibly facial palsy and other impaired movements, in extreme cases, the permanent impairment of the motor of the non-sensory function of the lower limb may occur. And in Europe, in Europe, the children, in children is concerned, the most common only manifestation are the facial palsy, cranial neuritis, other nerves of the cranium, uh, cranial nerves, and the lymphocytic meningitis. There is barn mouth syndrome. These are the you know manifestations of the disease. In about four to ten percent of untreated cases in the United States, as you come to the United States, the, the untreated patients, typically between June and December, about one month after the tick bite, the infection may cause cardiac problems, known as the Lyme carditis, will cause cardiomyopathy then. Symptoms may include the heart palpitations. Laziness, fainting, shortness of the breath, and the chest pain because it also involves the conductive system of the heart, which may cause the first degree heart uh, AV block and second degree, even third degree heart block can occur. And it will cause the fainting, you know, to, st to stroke Adam attacks. These are stroke Adam's attacks type of a thing. Other symptoms of the Lyme disease may also be present, such as the erythema migraine rash and joint aches, facial palsy, headaches, or the radicular pain. In some people, however, cardiitis may be the first manifestation of Lyme disease. This is very important. In, if you are, you are appearing in the American examination, this is the most important region, as early disseminated. Not localized, early disseminated. Cardiitis may be the first manifestation. The Lyme cardiitis is seen in about 90 to 87 percent of the people adversely impact the hard electrical conductive system called the AV blocks. And often manifest the heart rhythm that alternate with the minutes between abnormally slow and abnormally fast. Tachycardia, bradycardia syndrome. In 10 to 15 percent of the people, the Lyme causes myocardial complication such as cardiomegaly, left ventricular dysfunction, or even the congestive heart failure. Another skin condition found in the Europe but not in America is a Borrelia lymphocytoma, a purplish lump that develops on the air lobe, in, on the nipple or the scrotum. This is another condition which is not seen in America but seen in the Europe. This is Barnard syndrome, painful condition. It is radiculopathy is seen in this condition with lymphocytic meningitis, confusion, patient becomes confused possibly with the fever, possibly with the sign of meningism. This is Barnward syndrome. Now, late disseminated infection, it occurs in the 60% of untreated people. It will occur up to six months of the, uh, of the early disseminated infection. Six months or more than that. It usually affects only one or few joints, arth arthritis that is, actually arthritis often in the knee or the possibly the hip joint and the other joints. The large joints are involved or even the temporomandibular joint may be involved. Unusual. Usually a large joint effusion and swelling occur, but only mild or moderate pain. Without treatment, swelling and the pain typically resolve over time, but periodically return and bacosis may form an rupture because of the, of the heavy, you know, or a very severe type of arthritis. Bacosis is usually seen in cases of the rheumatoid arthritis. 
the differential diagnosis of the Baker's disease should also involve the Lyme arthritis. This is one of the BCQ you can make like this. It may possibly. A neurological syndrome called the Lyme encephalopathy is associated with a subtle memory and cognitive difficulties. Now there will be insomnia, general sense of feeling unwell and changes in the personality become mute, become less talkative, become, you know, it cannot recognize the people properly, etc. Problems such as depression and the fibromyalgia are common in people with Lyme disease in general population. There is no compelling evidence that the Lyme disease causes the psychiatric disorder, behavioral disorders like this ADHD or developmental disorder, for example, autism. Autism in children is concerned. Another lesion which is not commonly seen, although but it is part of the disease, is acute dermatitis chronica atrophicans, the chronic condition disorder that observed primarily in Europe, not in America. It begins with a reddish blue patch of discolored skin, often on the backs of the hands and the feet. The lesion slowly atrophies over the several weeks or months, and the skin becoming first then the wrinkled, wrinkling occurs, and then if untreated, completely dry and hairless. It is also, also associated with the peripheral neuropathy. The acute dermatitis chronica atrophicans is something which is, it is confusing with the scleroderma of the hands. And this is the joint diffusion. The knee joints are involved badly. And here is the protrusion, which you see here the coefficient collected this part. It is commonly seen in rheumatoid arthritis, but this is another very differential uh, of the rheumatoid arthritis, infective arthritis as Lyme disease. This is acrodermatitis atrophicus chronicum. The stages are seen here. Starts like this. This is the, this one. You start like first one and on the right side and then it becomes this one. The red all hands are involved, the fingers are involved, the part, here part, here the part, small patches, then a trophy occur and wrinklings are seen here all over the hand. Diagnosis can be done. The first diagnosis is the, is the, is the, is the, is the area, the physical area with the possibility the tick bite, exudates ticks, hard tick bite. The presentation and another clue to the diagnosis. Other than that, the lab diagnosis is concerned. ELISA and Western Blouse is the most widely used method for the Lyme disease diagnosis. And you can do the IgM and IgG, and possibly in the, in the, in the early weeks, four weeks, up to six weeks. Peak occurs at the, about eight weeks or ten weeks. Other tests may be used in neurobilirubinosis. Europe, in Europe, the neurobilirubinosis is usually caused by the Borrelia, Garenae, and almost always involves the lymphocytic pleocytosis (CSF) examination. The densities of the lymphocytes, infection-fighting cells, and protein in the cerebral spinal higher, typically rise to the intrathecal space, which contains the CSF. Demonstration by lumbar puncture and CSF analysis of pleocytosis, that is the presence of the WBC, here are lymphocytes, and intrathecal antibody production are required for the definite diagnosis. You do the ELISA for the CSF and you can diagnose it. Accurate diagnosis or definite diagnosis can be made in Europe specifically. And, uh, you can also have got associated uh, in Europe in the peripheral neuropathy. You can do the examination for the peripheral nerves. Electromyography or nerve conduction tests can reveal it properly which type of the uh, peripheral neuropathy it is. And it is always you know, associated in the Europe with acrodermatitis chronica atrophicans. And it is usually caused by the another species which is called the Borrelia abzeli, Mr. Abzel. 
is a Pakistani person who, who is uh, British born. It is British born. He is British born person, and he is the clinical microbiologist. This is called Borrelia F. Zeli, and confirmed a uh, blood antibody test. In North America, the new borreliosis is caused by the Borrelia burgdorferi may not be accompanied by the same CSF changes. They confirm the diagnosis of the CNS neuroborosis a positive, but do not exclude if negative. Actually, if it's negative, you cannot, uh, you cannot exclude it. American guidelines consider CSF in LS is optional, but in British it is, should be done. It is confined to the peripheral nervous system, therefore the peripheral nerves are examined for the electromyography and the uh, uh, nerve conduction studies. Because in America, the heart is involved. You do all the cardio ECGs and electrocardiograms and uh, echocardiography, the Doppler with Doppler and uh, biopsy, if it is possibly done, which confirms the uh, cardiomyopathy in the in in who who are expertised in their field they can do it without but without uh, biopsy actually we can assume that it is the uh, cardiomyopathy by with the help of the ECG by with the help of the X-ray chest with the help of the uh, echocardiography. Now another one another test which they have done is PCR because it is the the last resort to do is the PCR to detect the genetic material DNA. Now, serological studies only test for the antibodies. But PCR has advantage uh, and being much faster than the culture. Culture is very, very, you know, it is difficult to do. However, PCR tests are susceptible to false positive result because any spirochetal infection can cause the uh, PCR, you know, identification. They're very near to the Borrelia antigenic uh, structures. That's why you have to exclude the with the clinical examination and the geographical area with, with the tick bites are common. The PCR often shows false negative result also because few Borrelia cells can be found in the blood and the CSF during the infection. So that's why the uh, ELISA is superseded in this condition. However, the PCR are only recommended in special cases. For example, diagnosis of the Lyme arthritis because it is a highly sensitive way to detecting the OSPAR DNA in the synovial fluid or pleural fluid. Although the sensitivity of the PCR in CSF is low, its use may be considered when the intrathecal antibody production test results are suspected because you cannot exclude it as far as being a falsely negative. And PCR may be helpful, although with upper hand, uh, again, the ELISA, IgM in these cases, or the histopathology of the synovial uh, fluid. Several other forms of the lab test for the Lyme disease are available, some of which have been adequately validated. OSPA antigens shared by the Borrelia bacteria into the urine are a promising technique being studied. Easy to do it. The use of the nanotap particles for their detection is being looked at. Uh, the OSPA has been linked, you know, to the active symptoms of the Lyme. High titers of the either the immunoglobulins G or immunoglobulin M antibodies to Borrelia antigen indicate the disease. You can do it in the urine, but lower titers can be misleading because the IgM antibodies may remain after the initial infection. The CDC does not recommend the urine antigen test because Americans, you know, they are powerful persons and they are more knowledgeable. They said that they are, this is maybe a false positive, it is false negative. PCR test because false positivity and false negativity problems on the urine, again, this is the problematical immunoprocent staining for the cell deficient, the cell wall deficient forms of the Borrelia burgdorferi. Uh, they are there, and, uh, for example, Borrelia abzalai and other one, and the lymphocytic uh, transformation test. So, city does not recommend, 
which is a combination of the geographical data with clinical features and specifically doing the uh, test for the heart, if the heart is involved, if the, if the uh, brain is involved, you go to CSF examination, etc. They rely on this for the diagnosis. Imaging is helpful if there is, uh, you know, confusion and you suspecting the lymphocytic meningitis or you are suspecting the the uh, focalized uh, involvement of the brain. MRI and uh, the single photon emission computed tomography are uh, the two tests that can identify, identify the abnormalities in the brain of the person affected with the disease. Now these stacked disease, stacked or the MRI with contrast show numerous areas where an insufficient amount of blood is being delivered to the cortex and subcortical white matter. The stacked images are known to be non-specific because they show the heterogeneous pattern in the imaging. The abnormalities seen in the stacked images are very similar, that is seen in the people, because the people involving with the uh, you know, of the uh, confusion and uh, delirium and uh, the loss of memory, etc. Another disease is called the, which is Prompt-Round disease, it's uh, Kurzfeldt Jacob disease. It makes them questionable because it's very near. Uh, the pattern in the spectrum images or the MRI images are very, very similar. So it is not confirming test then. It means that it, it may help be, it may be helpful. Like this, that the involvement here you see this, the focal involvements are there. The trophy of the brain is seen in these cases. And here is the lesion very near to the basal ganglia. This is the, uh, the, uh, the, you see the density, high density shadow. It is uh, indicative of that the focal infection occurs. There is the generalized involvement. The central diagnosis. Uh, diagnosis is a new, it is a new, great imitator. Syphilis, that, is, that should be included as the old, great uh, imitator, classical one. Here is a great imitator, new. From the spider bites, you have to exclude cellulitis, shingles, and Bell's palsy, viral meningitis are very similar, sciatica because the radicular, radicular pain, diverticulitis, because of the involvement of the, uh, of the, of the system, and autonomic nervous system, uh, the patient will become constipated, and uh, even so much so that the bleeding occurs, uh, and it may be po possibly has uh, blood in the stools, that is called hematochasia. Acute coronation, of course, the heart is involved in the American pe people and it should be excluded. The great imitator, new great imitator. Management of the antibiotics, of course, uh, it's, it is a microbiological relation, you have to give the antibiotic. The oral administration doxycycline is widely recommended, the first drug of choice. And it is uh, effective uh, against not only the Borrelia, but very similar uh, other tick-borne disease. People taking doxycycline should avoid sun exposure because of the higher risk of the sunburn with this. The, the side effect of doxycycline, if you give the higher doses, it will cause the uh, sunburns, uh, the ultraviolet uh, cellulitis, or the rash. And another important problem with doxycycline that it can cause the esophagitis. So it is also no, should not be given the children younger than eight years of age and the women who are breastfeeding or pregnant. Alternative drugs of doxycycline are amoxicillin and sufuroxim and uh, azithromycin, nacrolytes. Azithromycin is recommended only in case of the intolerance to the other antibiotics. This is, should be safe drug because if it resistance occurs, then the other diseases are also cannot be treated with azithro azithromycin. The standard treatment uh, for the cellulitis, cephalaxin is not useful for the Lyme disease when it is unclear if a rash is caused by Lyme or cellulitis. 
the IDSA recommends that international uh, you know source uh, recommend that the ciproxine or the amoxicillin clomelinic acid that is called augmentin in Pakistan these are effective against both infections cellulitis are concerned individuals with the early disseminated or late Lyme disease may have symptomatic cardiac disease, Lyme arthritis, or neurological symptoms like facial palsy, radiculopathy, meningitis, or peripheral neuropathy. We give the intravenous uh, ciprotoxone. Now, ciprotoxone is very, very commonly used in Pakistan. The first choice, if they are involved, the nerves are involved, or the central nervous system is involved. Ciprotoxine and doxycycline are available in the as alternatives. <coughs> Some of the, uh, you know, their workers, they use both of them, combinations. Although it is not uh, you know, written in the literature, <coughs> and they are not followed by the Americans. The complication usually occurs, neurological complication, Lyme disease may be treated with doxycycline. It may be treated in case of the failure of septaxone. You can give, this is the you know, summary which I am telling you about it. It should be prolonged treatment. And higher doses are used for the both of them. Doxycycline is concerned and septaxone is concerned. It should be given at least for four weeks. And then you check the IgM, Ig levels. They are always raised specifically IgG, after successful treatment with antibiotics. If they are positive and positive and positive, it means the disease is hidden, indicative of the, the hidden disease inside your body, just like hepatitis C or B. The facial pelvic pelvic treatment uh, may resolve without treatment. You know, it can, it can, uh, you can manage it. Without treatment, uh, the times after seven to ten days, uh, just uh, care, be careful of the eyes and uh, be careful of the swelling. That's that is all you, you can manage like this. The people who have got the Lyme carditis, if they, they are first degree, uh, second degree block, maybe two or third degree block, but the temporary pacemaker will be placed, and the congestive cardiac failure should be managed accordingly. Lyme disease should not be treated with steroids. It was the disease. People with the Lyme arthritis should limit their level of physical activity to avoid damaging affected joints. In case the limping should use crutches, pain associated with the Lyme disease may be treated with the NSAIDs, corticosteroid joint injections are not recommended. Uh, that is being treated with antibody, but it will cause a trophy actually of the of the area. So, this disease is, uh, you know, potentially it is a disease which can cause a trophy of the tissues. That is why it should be avoided. People with a Lyme arthritis treated with intravenous antibiotics for two months uh, who continue to have joint swelling two months after treatment have negative PCR for the Borrelia DNA and synovial fluid are said to have post antibiotic Lyme arthritis. Both antibiotic Lyme arthritis are reactive type of arthritis that is more common after infection by certain Borrelia strain in the, uh, in the people's certain genetic and the immunological characteristics. Post antibiotic Lyme arthritis may be symptomatically treated with NSAIDs and arthroscopic synovectomy can be done or the physical therapy is helpful. People receiving treatment should be advised that in the infection is possible because it is a hidden infection and how to prevent it. How to prevent it? Again, if the tick will bite, it will you know, stimulate again the, the whole process. So the person who have got the relapsing state should immediately contact with the uh, person who is expert in inf infection and the disease. Prevention is this. That is Lyme time, protect yourself against Lyme disease. Avoidance of the tick bite. How will you avoid? The tick bites walk in the mid middle of the trails and avoid sitting on the logs and leaning on on the trees. Wear a hat, tuck in here if possible. Just like this. 
wear a, wear a long sleeve shirt fitted at the wrist, just like this. Wear long pants tucked into the high socks or duct tape around the ear joint. These all uh, things are seen in the army. We, because I was I served in the army also. And this type of dresses we use actually in the areas where the possibilities of the snakes are much. I consider DEET or the skin and the premethrin repellents if possible. We have the white or the light colored clothing to make it easier to see ticks on the on the on your on your toes. Do not take uh, do tick checks immediately after three days after outdoor activity. You find a tick, remove it carefully and save it for the for the study. And ask your veterinarian about the protection for your uh, fury friends. This is how you remove the tick is this is this is the technique. Tweezers are used. They pick it like this and go just vertically, just very quickly, so that this part should not be inside your body. It should be out immediately with tweezers. Otherwise, it, if it is broken down, then it will cause the granuloma formation or some other problem will occur here. So this is the protection, this is the prevention, vaccination, no human vaccine for Lyme disease available. The only human vaccine to advance to the market was the Lamex Rex, was available in 1998, but uh, discontinued in 2002. The VLA-15 was scheduled to start a phase 3 trial in the third quarter of 2022. It is not available because it is in the trial. With other research on going. Multiple vaccines are available for the prevention of Lyme disease in the dogs that's going on. Veterinarian, veterinarian will use it. They are successful. And human is concerned under research. And uh, the, the problem is that in human, the no definite uh, vaccine is uh, available. And this is the completion of the Lyme disease. I have talked about uh, more than one hour for the Lyme disease. I'm sorry that if you should know everything about this disease. If you are appearing in the examination, you, you want to be a successful practitioner, consult, consultant, and you should know how to diagnose the Lyme disease and how to manage the type of Lyme disease. It is the uh, you know, request from me that please do not go for the shortcuts. You should study these two videos with the help of your book once or twice or thrice if it is possible then pierce into your mind fit it just, just like null not, uh, the, like bolt nuts and bolt in your in your brain so you you you, you should not forget the disease wa ma alaina illa bilaq assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh